and loving God, we find it difficult at times to place our trust in you. Too often we look at the world and see only violence, pain, destruction, and signs of hopelessness and despair. Too often we rely on our own strength, our own plans, our own devices. Rather than trusting in your hand to hold us, your love to sustain us, and your wisdom to see us through, forgive us, Holy One. Help us turn to you when we are lost, that we might find our way home. Help us navigate the treacherous waters of this world that we might experience your abundant grace, mercy, and love. Help, Help us put our trust in you, that the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus may shine in our lives for all to see. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment of silent confession and reflection before God. Friends, Jesus said, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. My friends, experience God's forgiveness and joy, gifts that lead to new life. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. celebrates what are sounds of a celebration a party think about that yes excitement. excitement what does it sound like to be excited friends what does it look yes what does it sound like mrs westerman was just what does it look what does it feel like show me what it looks like to be excited yes yes yes, yes. what uh, let's see Sounds of celebration. 
Let's see, everyone ready? On the count of three, repeat after me. One, two, three, hooray! Hooray! Yes. What are the sounds of celebration? Oh, what do we do with our hands to make a sound? celebration that we say celebration at a party what do we say to one another at a party to celebrate yes the pizza rolls at dawn <laughs> to make sounds of celebration today with your grandparents or any time today you can reach out to the adult people in your life the grandmas the grandpas and what's another way to say you put something you can say to them today that would be really special I love you yes I love you oh friends good good okay we're gonna make a super circle for our super prayer. So stand up. This is your group stay here. Jack, you bring, bring the line this way. Autumn and Grayson, bring the line down here. Gonna hold hands. Thank you, Jacob. There we go. Oh, look at this. This is a gift. You are a gift today. Here we go. Repeat after me. Let's pray. Bow your head. Repeat after me. Dear God, today is a day of celebration. We celebrate our grandma. We celebrate our grandpas. Thank you, God, for all the time we get with them. Amen. Time for Sunday school to prepare for the celebration. <laughs> Oh, 
of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When I grew up, um, there was a bridge at the end of town, and just over that bridge, a very pretty, wealthy town, Riverside, Illinois. When I was a kid, it was popular on Saturday to go get lost in Riverside. See, Riverside had no, has no straight roads, and only the one or two main thoroughfares had markings. So we'd take our bikes, ride until we were lost. Then sometimes we panic and worry that we'd really gone too far this time, but of course, we always found our way out our way home, but man, did we try to get lost. The lost in the parables today are, are those who are spiritually lost, those who have never experienced a relationship with God or those who have turned away from that relationship. We are lost when we turn away from God, when we dismiss our commitment to love God and one another. Sometimes we wander off unaware that we are lost without trying, unaware that, that our actions, our words have caused harm. Sometimes we run away from God with intention, knowing full well the consequences of our actions, we are lost when we let vengeance 
anger, fear guide us. When we self-soothe at someone else's pain or expense, hurt, angry, ashamed, we get on our bike, disappear over that bridge, and dare God to find us. Sinfulness is a kind of lost. Sin makes us wander from God in the community. To sin is to fracture community, to fracture the wholeness and wellness of another, of yourself. To be found, then, is to accept God's <coughs> forgiveness and to seek repair, repair of what our behavior fractured. In our worship service, we work in words of confession every Sunday because we know this about ourselves. Our penchant for being, getting lost, for turning away from God, and so we try to live an honest and healthy relationship with God. We try to live in reality of who we are as human beings. People who sin, who do not always follow God's commandment to love. People in need of forgiveness. People who need a change of heart sometimes toward our neighbors and ourselves. So every Sunday we pray a prayer for transformation and new life. We confess our sins. We own the ways we are lost. We ask forgiveness. We ask to be transformed, to be found. And we pray for God's help. Turn us back, God. Then we reflect in silence. Sometimes those words of confession strike chords that needed to be struck. But then we approach the rest of worship with our minds set to holy thinking. We prepare ourselves to be found by divine purpose and possibility. That's what Jesus is doing in these parables this morning. He's inviting all around him into holy thinking, divine thinking. Love and welcome like God. The shepherd, the woman, God and God's angels, they throw parties when the lost are found. We hear words of grace after our confession and we respond with a resounding thanks be to God, exclamation mark. Here in Luke, here with Jesus are some of the lost. Tax collectors, sinners, gathered near to Jesus of their own accord to listen. And the legal expert's first response, grumbling. Like the elder brother in another parable, who grumbles when the younger wayward brother returns home and is celebrated. That's what inspires Jesus telling of these parables. He is inviting the legal experts into divine thinking, reminding them when the one sheep who is lost is returned, they are not ostracized. They are not checked into the lost sheep area. They are not excluded. The one who was lost is welcomed back into the whole. You know, the parables of the lost sheep and the lost coin are among the most beloved affirming parables in the Gospels. And it's no wonder. We learn something amazing about how God loves us. In all our searching for God, it turns out God searches for us too and finds us and embraces us and rejoices in the reunion. As a shepherd searches for a lost sheep, as a woman searches for a lost coin, God seeks us out to connect, to connect again, to save us. God searches for you relentlessly. Like God, the shepherd goes after the lost sheep until he finds it. The woman searches for the lost coin until she finds it. God does not give up on you. In order to be lost, 
You had to have a place to begin with. You are a child of God. You are necessary, an important piece, part of the whole. And your wholeness, the community's wholeness, is what God and God's angels celebrate when one who was lost is found. That is some powerful good news this morning. The celebration, the rejoicing happens when we turn, when we reorient our lives in our relationship with God. That's what Jesus' ministry is all about, calling people back to God's way of love. Jesus doesn't write people off. Jesus pursues relationship, embracing forgiveness, finding a way. And oh, we need a lot of ways. We wander. We need to be found again and again. Friends, ours is an aspirational faith. There is no end game level of righteousness where you get to hang up your walking shoes because our wandering days are over. Even the song, Amazing Grace, understands that receiving God's amazing grace is a recurring gift. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Will lead us home. The path home is sometimes obvious and easy, like traveling on a train on a tight schedule. Sometimes the path home is long, a hard walk, and we turn off it, not trusting that God will see us through. But when we are lost, God searches for us, wanting to restore us, to reunite us with the community. When we are found, God and all of heaven celebrate abundantly, absurdly, extravagantly. In the United Church of Christ, we talk about extravagant welcome. I encourage you to look down as you're leaving the sanctuary today, and you will see those words on the mat leading in and out of the main sanctuary doors. Today, as we gather to hear the gospel, as we gather near Jesus, listening alongside the legal experts and the tax collectors, we are reminded that our faith is about an extravagant welcome back as well. So much grace, absurd grace, and so much joy when wholeness is brought back to the community. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I wonder what that sound is for you. What has it been for you in your life the sounds of God's amazing grace. We do not know who will come through our church doors. We do not always know the burdens each other carries. We do not know who is showing up here feeling lost, alone, ashamed, isolated from community. So church, let us, let our welcome be extravagant and genuine. Let the message of hope and love and grace ring out through our community. Let the work of our ministries be a joyful sound of amazing grace. Amen. We sing this morning as the ones who were lost and found.
Christ, we have received much from God, grace, mercy, abundance, the love of Christ, and the gift of life itself. In our worship, we praise God and give God thanks for these gifts. Giving our time, talent, and treasure is a way of saying thank you. In gratitude for God's generosity, let us share God's abundance with one another, our morning offering. of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Patriots Day and all those, all the helpers who sacrificed. Yes. Very important cash. Yeah. I'd just like to thank everybody for the cards and the prayers, especially the any mission for the two or three? For the prayer show. The prayer show. It's hard to get out. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, any ministry as well. Very good day on New Year Day. Well. John? Sister 
friends, let's prepare our hearts for prayer. children and grandchildren, the lingering sunlight, the knitting of shattered bones. You are present in each reminder of life's grace. God, renew our willingness to bear grace and goodness into the chaos of the world. On this September 11th, we remember and mourn the unspeakable death and destruction 21 years ago. We give thanks for the courage and sacrifice of so many helpers on that day and in the aftermath. 21 years later, help us, God, help us to turn away from the easy response of violence for violence. Form in us a steady commitment to return love in the face of fear, hope in the midst of despair and mercy for every brokenness of the world's making. God, we pray for all who cannot rest in safety, who must remain alert to signs of danger because their countries are riven by war or because their homes are torn by violence or because they have no shelter but the street. Help us to move with compassion toward those who are in need. We pray for those who are troubled in mind, body, or spirit, those who are lost or lonely, those who face hard illness, those haunted by anxious thoughts, those weary, tired, burdened down. God, you know the needs of your people. Hear our prayers for first responders. For Gail, Alan, Carol, Jeanette, Delina, Linda, Kevin, Nancy, Alda, John, Carrie, Sylvia, Alberto, Baby Boy Cash, Eric, Magdalena, Vincent, Victor, Myron, Michael, Peggy, and Christie's grandma. Patient and persistent God, let your grace and mercy overflow from our lives that we might honor your name in the world. For we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who came to seek and save what was lost. Let us pray as Christ our Savior taught us, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We invite Jim Warner forward for our morning announcements. Thank you, those of you who have signed up for the crop walk. Our walker list grows and it is very exciting. Also, uh, Heritage Fest, the, Jim is going to make an announcement about Heritage Fest t-shirts. If you are planning to volunteer, or you would just like a cool orange St. Paul's t-shirt, there is a sample of the shirt out on the hall table by the sign up. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, there are a number of announcements this morning. Uh, today, after service, the Sunday school children are inviting their grandparents to the Mission House for a special uh, coffee celebration for grandparents. I don't know about any coffee, but I know there's ice cream. So. <laughs> uh, T-shirt orders are due by this Thursday, September 15th. There are two options, an orange Heritage Fest shirt for volunteers to wear during the event, or if you haven't bought one in the past and would like one, a blue St. Paul's shirt, uh, the shirts are $10. See the hall sign up to place your order. This Friday, September 16th, there will be a youth gathering at the Mission House. A scavenger hunt and fire pit and s'mores are planned. This event is for kids in grades 5 through 75. So if any of you want to come here, I'm sorry. There is an age limit, grades 5 through 8. Never mind. Uh, next Sunday, September 18th, is a special outdoor service that we call the Blessing of the Animals. This is when you bring your neurotic dogs and cats and try to take the devil out of them. So uh, bring your pets to church. It doesn't have to be a dog or cat. Other people, if you can bring your lizard or two snakes, I hate snakes. And, uh, oh well, God loves them anyway, so bring them. And Pastor Liz will do her best to bless them and send them on their way. We will collect cat and dog food donations for the Starfish Animal Rescue in Geneva. So if you uh, can be so kind as to bring a food donation, that would be most appreciated. The Mission Ministry is looking for volunteers to distribute food and diapers at the Mobile Food Pantry next Tuesday, September 20th. If you can volunteer, please sign up on the hall table. There will be a Christian education meeting this Thursday at 5.30 um, here at the church. Uh, that's 5.30 p.m., not a.m., uh, here at the church. Wednesday, the worship committee will be meeting by Zoom at 3 p.m. Um, that's a change from meeting here in person. We'll be meeting on Zoom at 3. Uh, remember, the uh, Living Nativity is scheduled for December the 11th at 4 and 5 p.m. There are opportunities to sign up to help with that uh, available in the Narthex. And last week I had a chance to talk with some of you at the uh, coffee hour, and many of you have graciously said you have Nativity sets to loan. I even spoke to one of our visitors by mistake and got them into all three <laughs> So bless their hearts. I, they're not here today. I might have driven them away. I don't know. Uh, if you have an Nativity set, uh, be thinking about uh, finding it and having it available for display on the 11th. Uh, I think that's everything. Uh, let me double check. Oh, council meets on Thursday, I believe at uh, 7 p.m. And it's that time of the month for Linda to come and read us birthdays and anniversaries. Thank you, Jim. I love this Sunday when we can celebrate anniversaries and birthdays. And so we're going to start out with a, a happy anniversary and so if you are here, if you're present, please stand if you are able. Mark and Becky Kelly, Bill and Joanne Pate, Mike and Karen Westerman, Dave and Katie Kay, Larry and Kim French, 
and Bob and Judy Reimer. Mike, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> here it's teaching Sunday school, but um, those who are absent, like I always say, maybe they're out celebrating, who knows? But um, may, may God bless you, and may you have many, many more years um, celebrating your marriage, which is one of God's sweetest covenants. Happy birthday. Please stand if you are able. Barb Casper. How, how old is she, Chris? 95, probably? Yeah. Yes. 95. I just love our church because we have so many people in their 90s. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Tenley Bokany. Now, the next name, Jennifer Bokany, will the real Jennifer Bokany. <laughs> there she is, who has a birthday. You know, I don't know if you know this, we have two Jennifer yeah. Bokany's in the church. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Wilms. Bill Wilson, Rita Rucker, Lee Tilke, Florence Hanford, Judy Olson, Otto Einwich, Tristan Bokany, and Declan Wilson. Oh, please remain standing because we have a song for you. <laughs> Let's give the anniversary, the anniversary and the birthday person an applause. <laughs>